Hello everyone and welcome to the most interesting part of this course where we're going to be talking about the ant colony optimization algorithm. This is one of my favorite algorithm and there is no doubt that it's one of the best and most well-regarded algorithm in the world. You can find the application of this algorithm in pretty much every field. People have, have applied this algorithm to a wide range of problems and it's been one of the best algorithm, one of the most efficient algorithms in the history. I'm very excited. I am very, very excited to share this algorithm with you. So we have a series of videos now in this part of the course where we talk about the inspiration, mathematical model, the algorithm, and the implementation of the ACO or ant colony optimization algorithm. So without further ado, let's get into this video and talk about the inspiration of the ant colony optimization. The ant colony optimization algorithm was proposed by an Italian scientist named Marco Dorigo as a part of his PhD in 1992. In fact, the first ant-inspired algorithm was called ant systems. But these days, we use improved version of this algorithm, which is now called ant colony optimization, or in short form, people call it ACO. The main inspiration of the ACO algorithm comes from Stigmergy in an ant colony. In Stigmergy, the trace of an action done by an organism simulates subsequent actions by the same or other organisms. For instance, in a termite colony, one termite might roll a ball of mud and left it next to a hole. Another termite identifies the mud without communicating with the first termites and use it to fix the hole. In nature, such behaviors result in complex and decentralized intelligence without planning and direct communication. Stigmergy also exists between humans. A good example is websites like Wikipedia or Reddit. There are millions and millions of articles developed by contributors across the globe. When you search for a topic, you can find a lot of articles. Without knowing who has contributed to those articles, you can edit them too. The key point here is that there is no centralized control unit to coordinate the process of making, editing, and even approving those articles. Everything is done by people across the globe via the content in that website. One of the most evident examples of a stigmergy can be found in the behavior of ants in an ant colony when finding a food. Normally, finding food is an optimization task where organisms try to achieve maximum amount of food source by consuming the minimum amount of energy. In an ant colony, this can be achieved by finding the shortest path from the nest to any food source. In nature, ants solve these problems using a very simple algorithm that is the main inspiration of the ant colony optimization. To better understand the stigmergy and finding the shortest path in an ant colony, let's start with an analogy. You know me that I like analogy and every time that I want to talk about a concept, I always like to give you an analogy because this is where you can link this new concept or those new concepts to an experience in real life. We are going to assume that there is a small village over here in the middle of a desert with several families. Every day they have to travel several kilometers to bring water from a big pond as you can see over here. People use two main routes to bring water over the rears, but no one knows which one is shorter. So these are the paths, one over here and one over here. Of course, this path, this path is the shortest one and this one is longest. But the problem is that no one in the village knows which one is shorter. So people randomly choose one of them every day. One day, a young boy, a young girl 
decided to solve this problem for everybody else. Remember, this story goes back to 500 years ago when there was no vehicle, mobile, or GPS to easily find these kind of short paths. After a few days, they came up with the idea of marking both passes with water and always follow the path that is more wet. Obviously, the longer path faces longer evaporation before someone makes it wet again. One morning, they wake up and decided to bring water several times. They each take two buckets, one to bring water and one to mark the path. Let's also assume that the right path is almost half of the right one. So, by the time that the girl reaches the pond, the boy is halfway. The point is that the girl doesn't know whether the boy is on the way or has gone already, and they don't want to communicate. They just want to check the path. If it's more wet, then they follow the, that path. She grabs two buckets and goes back to the village while marking the path with water. When she got back home, the boy arrives at the pond and fill out his buckets. On the way back, he get to the fork, but remember, they decided to follow the path that is more wet. So this guy knows the answer and he is going to follow the path marked by the get. So obviously, with one try, they both manage to find the shortest path. And over time, the path gets more wet and this is an indication that this path is shorter than the other. So let's say they decided to go and bring water once more in that day. The path is already wet. We assume that there is no vaporization at this stage. So when they get to the point where you have to choose two paths, they are gonna choose the one that is shorter, right? So they get to the pond, they fill out their buckets, and then when you get to the point where you have to choose one of these two paths, they know what to do. They're gonna choose this path, and there we go. They are already in the village with two buckets of water, and remember, they, path, they mark the path again, so over time, the shortest path becomes more wet, and that is a good indication that this path is the shortest path. So as you can see, with just one trip to the pond, a one round trip I should say to the pond, they managed to easily find the shortest path. So that means they solved this problem after years of choosing any of these two paths randomly. Now, you might be asking, what will happen if they choose a wrong path accidentally or the water vaporizes? And this is a definitely valid point, and that's what happens in reality. So let's consider a scenario where both of them follow their own paths twice. So let's start. So the lady goes to the pond, grabs some water, while the boy is on the way, because her path is twice shorter than the path that you know the boy follows. She's gonna go two round trip to the pond and mark the path with water, and the boy only goes to one trip. So by the end of this iteration or this step, the shortest path is of course more width than the longest one. But imagine that they follow their path again. So this boy is crazy. He wants to prove that his path is a good one, so he tried to do it again. So they both follow the path again. So the lady is going to mark the path twice, as you can see in this animation. And this poor guy stayed on the way, trying to think that, you know, his path is better. They make those paths more wet because they use the same amount of water. The shortest path is going to be always more wet than the longest one. Okay, so now what happens when vaporization occurs? So I hope you see that transition between these thick lines to a bit thin. Remember, vaporization occurs with the same rate on the sand, right? So 
That means water vaporizes in the shorter and longer path, but the point is that the shorter path gets deposited with water more frequently than the longest one. So over time, the shortest path becomes more wet, and that is again a good indication of the fact that the path over here is the shortest path, or the short path as compared to the long one that the boy followed. This is roughly how ants find the shortest path from a nest to a food source. Instead of water, ants produce chemicals called pheromones. There are many types of pheromones for different purposes in an ant colony, of which one of them is used to mark the path towards a food source. Most of the ants are also blind, so that's the only way that they can communicate, which is obviously a good example of stigmergy in nature. The only difference between ants and the guys in our analogy is the fact that ants are more likely to choose a path with stronger pheromone level. So this means that they make decisions based on probabilities. The higher the pheromone level, the higher probability of choosing the path. To understand how ants use pheromone levels and probabilities to make decision and choose one path out of many, I have prepared an example for you. Let's assume that the nest is on the left hand side, as you can see over here. There are two ants and there's a food source on the right hand side. There are two paths to get to the food source from the nest. So we're going to start with two identical paths with the same length and then at some point I will consider also one long and one short path. So both of them start searching for the food. When get to the fork here, they can go either up or down. There is no pheromone deposited on the ground. So there is 50% chance to go up, 50% chance to go down. Or the probability of choosing the upper path is 50%, the lower path is 50%. We're going to assume that the red ant goes up and the pepper ant goes down. So they choose different paths, and of course, because we have the same length, those paths are of the same length, they're gonna get to the food source at the same time. They grab a bite, and on the way back, when, get, when they get to the point that we have to make a decision again, which path to choose, there is also 50% probability to go up and down. Why? because we have the same amount of pheromone on each of those paths. So nothing changed, it's exactly similar to having no pheromone on the, on the ground. So we will assume that they follow their own paths, they lock their own pheromone for whatever reason, and they're gonna get to the nest at the same time, right? So they go back and forth, of course, um, several times to be able to you know, bring the entire food source piece by piece to the nest, but the key point is that even if once both of them choose one path is either on the way towards the food source or the nest, they will choose one path and the amount of pheromone on that path will be higher than the other path, right? So in this case, think about it, if this guy reached to this point where we have to choose one of these two paths. Of course, the probability of choosing the upper path is higher than the lower path. Let's say 70% 70 as, com 70 as compared to 30%, right? So over time, one path will be established because you know, when you choose one path multiple times, you're gonna deposit more pheromone and you attract more ants towards that path. And at some point, you, even if the vaporization occurs, it's gonna occur for all paths. So if I remove some of these, you know, pheromones, we deposit again, and then at some point, a path is established between the nest to the food source. And that is where the probability of choosing the upper path is 100%. So no ant is gonna go down, that will be the path to find the food source. Of course, that in this example, both of the paths are of the same length, so it doesn't matter which one to take. So let's change the scenario now. 
where we have two paths of different lengths. We've got a straight path, which is the short one, and we have a long path where you need to go around the straight path. So these guys again decided to search for food. So when they get to this point, no pheromone on the ground, which means 50 up, 50 down, or I shouldn't say down because it's straight, so 50 up, 50 straight. So we're gonna assume that this, the red one, the stupid one, is gonna choose the long one, and the pepper one is gonna choose the straight one, right? So this guy gets to the food source so much faster, this guy is sitting on the way, grab a piece of, you know, food, Remember, they are still marking the path with their pheromones. Grab a piece of food, come back. At this stage, the probability of choosing the straight path is 100% because this guy didn't get the chance to mark you know, this part of the long path. So this guy is very likely to choose this one and we assume that it takes the first path. So it goes all the way to the nest and this guy just arrived to the food source and now they are ready to do this again. So they, again, the pepper ant gets to the fork faster. So what is the probability of now choosing the straight path? We've got one pheromone line here, two pheromone lines here, right? So that means I would say 70% straight, 30% up. So this guy is still likely to choose the the long path, uh, but the key point here is that the probability of choosing the straight path, which is the shortest path, is higher. And we assume that this guy is smart and it will follow the pepper line. But this guy again, we assume that accidentally follows the path, the red path, although we have the same probabilities for both of them. I mean, the same probability that this end uses to choose the shortest one. But let's say this guy, is not that lucky, right? And chooses the long path. And it's gonna mark the path, get to the nest. And remember, we have now three marks or three pheromones, long pheromone lines for the straight path, two for the long path or for the upper path. Now, next swap, we have over time, as you can see, I'm not gonna simulate this again, but over time, the probability of choosing the shortest path increases every time. It's now 90, 20, and let's say you go, they go back and forth, they leave, you know, pheromone again. Over time, vaporization occurs, no problem. We remove one line for each, each, you know, path. But the key point again is that the shortest path is going to be deposited with pheromone faster than the longer path. So there, so there we go, that's what happens. This time the red one decided to choose the the straight path, again, the pepper one, and over time, we are going to have an established path, which is the shortest path from the nest to the food source. And remember, we don't have just two ants. There are other ants that, you know, try to, you know, follow the pathways with higher pheromone concentration. And in that case, at some point, you're gonna get a dominant path and with this simple technique, different ant colonies across the globe always and always find the shortest path between the nest to the food source. So the next time that you saw, you know, the ants are eating your food, appreciate them instead of killing them. Thanks for watching. That's the end of this video and I will see you in the next one. Let's have a moment of silence for all the ants that we have killed so far in our lives.